Drake May is one of the most interesting quarterback prospects in this year's draft. He sits at 6'4", 230. Some people think he's going to be a top five pick. Some people think he'll slide all the way to the second round. Nobody really knows. So we're going to go dive into his most recent game against NC State. He was 22 of 38, 250 yards passing, two touchdowns, two interceptions. I feel like this game, hopefully we see a lot of what the full package of what he can do looks like. We're not going to hold him too accountable for the scheme that he's in. We're going to just try to judge him off of his big playability, his arm angles, the stuff that I feel like we can look at in a vacuum and remove him from the UNC situation and see what he'll be like in the NFL. Let's dive in. All right, looks like we're going to have one, two, three, progression. What do we got here? Cover six. I don't know what brought him to that side right away. And again, like I'm not going to try to judge guys off of their reads, but in theory, as soon as you see safety rotate up, you get shell to the boundary, shell meaning cover two. This is where you should start in progression. You got flat, out route, under, basic, China. So I don't know what brought him over here, but this is where I'd be going with the ball if this was like an NFL progression. Three-step, out route, should be money. Again, no harm, no foul. First pass attempt of the game, ends up tucking it. Look, he looks left. This is kind of what gets me. He looks left and for some reason gets off of it immediately. It happens. All right, now we're third down, third and nine. Looks like we're probably going to get some sort of two man. Yep, definitely looks like two man. So quarterback's a big threat. You're going to have to probably rely on an outbreaker unless an in route can cross face and he throws it away. Looks like another mishap. It looks like he's just throwing and not looking at what he's throwing at. Again, running back's probably your best outlet here, which he keeps his feet. I don't know. Tough to see, but you know it's two man. Drop back. It's not really precise with his feet, and he just throws it away. Okay, moving on to the next drive. You go cover three again. They're going to be blitzing. Little baby play fake. You got crossers, out route. What's he doing up here? We'll find out. Misses the throw. He's got to collect most dangerous, I'm assuming. Doesn't block anybody right here, though. That's a throw, in my opinion, that you got to make. You get the edge. like That's really open. So I know it's a tough throw going to your left, but we've seen top five picks make those throws. And that's just, I don't know. I know people miss throws, but right now this game's starting off pretty shaky. Just dirted it and rushed it. Third and 15. Not a pretty start at all. QB draw. Almost falls. I don't know. I know that's unfortunate, but. Uh, that's tough. Not a whole lot he could do. Let's see the other angle. Stop getting away. And he fumbles. Oh, no. This is not the start to the game that he wanted. Takes a big hit, gets fumbled. I don't want to hear anybody complaining about Jaden Daniels getting hit hard. I don't want to hear it ever again. Nobody has said a word about Drake May getting hit hard and fumbling the ball and all of that. We're just going to ignore that. They're still in this game, though. Let's get a little momentum going. Be ready for the blitz off the slot. They're probably not coming with how much he's off, but that'd be an easy bubble spit. They are. Blitzing off the slot. RPO. And misses it, man. What is going on? And again, for what it's worth, we never know if these guys are playing injured. We don't know what the deal is in college, man. Like, look, I played with separated shoulders, dislocated shoulders. Like, we don't know what causes guys to miss throws or if they start having like a law on their performance because a lot of it's undisclosed. I'm not going to say he's injured, but I'm going to say it doesn't look like he's playing comfortable. Play fake. And honestly, to me, the biggest thing that gets me with him for how big he is and how, quote, strong arm he has, he's kind of got like a wind up that doesn't like he doesn't just rip it, in my opinion. Like, let me see if I can go slow mo. Like his throwing motion is like. I don't know, just it feels slow to me. And sometimes you get those guys that are six, four, five, six, six, and they just have a longer throwing motion. His he doesn't feel like he has like a whip. It feels delayed. And right there, if he hits this throw right here. That could be a touchdown if this dude breaks a tackle. And I know that this is just one small sample size of a game, but we've seen him miss every available throw that he's had for the most part to what could have been a big play. And if you're a top five pick in the NFL, I'm sorry, you've got to be making those in college more often than not because the margin of error in the NFL is going to be that much tighter. My red flags are up right now. Play fake, throws the bubble, gets blown up. It's a good ball. Two by two set, five man box. It's cover two ish over here with invert ish over here. 
Oh, man. Let's watch his feet. Let's see what his eyes are thinking. First, let's look at the routes. You have four verts with a stop and your running backs your check down. This I don't like. His receiver falls down. It wasn't a bad spot for the ball, but what I don't like is his feet. We talk about feet all the time. If you have a stop route, 10, 12 yard stop route, whatever it is, your drop is three steps and a hitch. And I don't know what he's being coached to do, so I can't even judge him on that. But at the very end of the day, the biggest thing that I see with him, and this is over a lot of tape, is he actually drifts in the pocket side to side a lot. He never really drops straight back, not often. And oftentimes he creates his own pressure. And we'll go to this side to look at it. If I'm just in quarterback school and I'm saying, look, you're throwing a 12 yard stop route at the outside receiver spot you're going to take three step drops and a hitch and let the ball go and if he's still not out of his break you're going to put a little more air on it to anticipate the throw we've been doing that since we're like seven eight nine years old that's what it looks like when you translate drills to the game and let's just see what his feet look like on this route and let's see where like everything so one two three four five six seven and hitch and throw like that i'm sorry where are you drifting to like this, it's a straight drop back. And look at where he ends up to create his own pressure. He should be right here. So we're gonna just keep this here. Look at that soft part of the, of the pocket. And we talk about like inaccuracies and some of his completion percentage problems. Well, people are like, oh, like he got pass rush, he got pressure, whatever. Like dude is supposed to be right here in the pocket, hitting that same throw in rhythm with anticipation. And he took like a seven step drop to get there. And it's just like, I don't know where the drop off in like coaching is or like what he's being asked to do. Is it just negligent? I don't know. But all that that tells me is like, look, yeah, he can probably, if he takes a three step drop and hitch and rips it, he'll probably throw it like he's throwing routes on air and t shirt and shorts. But he needs a learning curve in the NFL around some vets that have been doing it for a long time to catch up the speed because that will get you killed. Like the margin for error to play quarterback in the NFL in the pocket is so small. And if you're creating your own pressure, like that's a bad habit that's got to break and it will cause so many turns turnovers and that's risky if you're going to try to take a guy top five that's what i'm saying so for him i look at him as like a second round guy with a higher ceiling ish but he's going to need time to develop at least from what i'm seeing out of this first three drives of this game in his final year of playing college football in his last college game you would think that all of those things would be at their cleanest at this point in time but they're not here we go one two three look now he's in the soft part of the pocket starts to scramble in his own runs let's see Takes another decent hit. I'm sorry. I do not want to hear it about Jaden Daniels ever again. Not doing it. Let's see what the concept is. Stick. Basically stick, go. Running back, check flat. Through route here. He has nothing. That's fine. Third and long. You're trying to go make a play. Kind of runs with his eyes down a little bit. Hopefully on an early down, he'd check it down to his running back. Let's see what he's thinking in scramble. One, two, three. One, two. I mean... He didn't really even go through his reads. He was just hopping his feet around to make it seem like it. One, two, three, four. Nice little check down. Gets pressure from distance. One, two, three, four. I think that's good. The other thing that I would say is like pre snap, where is the soft spot in the defense if you know you have an out route? You know you have an out route. You know you have somebody that cannot buzz underneath of it. This is what I'm thinking is left, right throw the out route. That's your answer. Like that's hundred percent your hot answer. It's a really bad out route and it ends up working, but I don't know. Those are things that like understanding where the pressure is coming from. You want to throw into pressure, throw to your out route to the field. That's the first thing I think all oh, these guys are creeping. Cool out route. Take it. I know. I don't know. Just another thing. I can't like even judge him on that though, because I don't know what he's being coached to do. We're going to go routes first. So he's got what the hell is this? Somebody thinks it's a run play. Somebody's blocking too. He thinks it's a run play. These guys are running a route. So it looks like miscommunication across the board. Like how do you even, <clears throat> how do you even judge him? It's tough. And again, he's facing drop eight so often <laughs> in college. It's just hard to like know what the deal is. Oh, come on, big dog. Getting that same thing. It's basically like three deep. These guys are playing more like two. But it's three deep. They're already pre-aligning too. One, two, three, four. He's in a good part in the pocket. Unloads. Misses high. Let's see where the ball placement was. He just doesn't, in my opinion, look comfortable really much as a thrower. You got to catch that, though. I know you're afraid to get hit, big dog. Like, they'll tell him, dude, you got to get that ball down a little bit, but that's a hard throw. I'm not going to, like, that's a hard throw. He's got to find a way to catch that. 
That's unfortunate. I would say that is a NFL type throw. You're not going to be perfect. I'm not going to nitpick it. Like dude's got to come down with the ball. Now we're in third and seven again, backed up. Like unfortunate to be down 20 to zero backed up. They go empty. They're going to be in some sort of cover one B cover 11 B. So what they got. Oh no, dude. Oh God. All right. So you have inside receiver fade a through route a, a slant route and he catches it and throws it to the slant right now which is fine but he leads him out to dry it's tough let's see the this angle just like the ball placement i'm just not seeing i'm not then again he might just have had a rough night throwing like i don't know but it looks like he's just like heaving it as hard as he can into a slant he misses the throw slightly. I mean, that's that's a blow up waiting to happen. As of right now, all the top five talks, I'm just not seeing it. I think he's really raw. He has obvious talent, but he needs a lot of coaching and a lot of like behind the scenes getting caught up to speed, in my opinion. Here we go. Nice corner route. See him settle in a little bit. Drops back. Plants, resets. Actually slides to a good part of the pocket. That's a plus. That's a good play. See it play out. I'd like to see him take a real drop, but that's okay. Good ball. That'll work. Now they're in hurry up. Expect him to throw a bubble. Got it. Now get into a rhythm. Sometimes it just takes getting that first completion in a drive to get a rhythm going. And they're going to be in a hurry up a lot now. They're down 23-0. Here we go. Drops back. First hitch. Resets. Scrambles. Here we go. Go make a play, big dog. Nice job using your feet, getting into a rhythm. Say he's not as fast as I thought he was, but he covers a lot of ground. It's tall. Rips left bunch. Bring pressure again. Watch him. Look at his body language. Look at his body language. Yep, they're bringing cover zero. Check to a rollout. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's that's nice. That's really nice. Good timing too. Balls out as the receiver's breaking. He's able to beat him with timing and accuracy. And that's the stuff though too. Like this was that same throw in the, like earlier in the game that he actually missed. He dirted the ball when he was rolling left. He's being chased. He didn't get his hips around. Like he corrected what he messed up earlier in the game, which is great to see. I mean, that's basically the same exact throw that he dirted earlier, and now it's a dime for a touchdown. It's like all the abilities there. My thing, though, criteria-wise for like, if we're talking about guys that are top five, top 10 picks, you've got to be pretty much ready to go, in my opinion, because the opportunity cost of passing up a top five receiver, or top five DB, or like a linebacker, somebody that's going to change the game for your team immediately. Like, I don't think that Drake May can go in and change the game for anybody right now. I think he needs time. He needs a year or two. My criteria for top five guys is very strictly like, can you go change the opportunity? outcome of what that team season looks like in year one here we go nice quick ball good catch this is what he should have done earlier in the game so like he's showing you that in game he's making adjustments he's doing things different he can mess it up and fix it so like that's a good trait like that's such a positive that just also shows you as a coach he can learn you can teach him let him go learn and practice by making a bunch of mistakes it will make him a better player here we go let's see what's up now they blitz you you're gonna scramble Nobody's home. Can you make one miss? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Oh, no, don't get hawked. Don't get hawked. That's okay. That's a great run. That's also like that checks a box for scouts when they're looking like what type of quarterbacks are you going to be on a third down type of situation? This is third and six heavy man down when the routes aren't open, when we can't scheme something up, can he go get it with his feet? The box check in the NFL for having mobility as a quarterback is not, can you bust out 50 yard runs? Can you move the chains on third down? That's a huge box check. He's got it. Third quarter, nine minutes left. Let's go get a score on the board. Drops back. Out route, misses it. He throws it too hard when he doesn't need to sometimes. Yeah, short motion. Zone read. Okay. I don't like look at him actually as a natural runner. He runs super upright. I think he just he's decent at running because he's big but he's not like a natural runner in my opinion it's okay though he's got the he's got enough ability 
You can tell he plays like the type of guy that's been bigger than everyone for a really long time. You go. A little crafty. Move left on the QB sneak. I like that. I love that. I love that so much. That lets you know he's a little bit of a baller, dude. He can figure it out. He can turn it on. He can play the game within the game. He's also young. He's 21 years old. Let's go give the kid some time to figure it out, man. Here we go. Ah, oh, don't call that. All right, 14 to 39 in the third quarter. That's unfortunate. That is unfortunate. Let's keep watching it. Okay, let's see it. Lays it over the top. Looks like we got some sort of post wheel. Oh, let's go. Like it. That's fine. He put a little little mustard on it. I like that. I like that he drives it in to secure the the completion. Three first hitch pumps. Oh no. Good play, I guess. I'll take it. Good play. Let's see what happened. Did he get tripped? First hitch, second hitch. Oh no. Just kind of fell on his own. <laughs> Your baby giraffe happens to the best of us. Happened to me in high school one time on a long touchdown run that was not a touchdown because I tripped. Hit my Danny Dimes when I was 13 years old, 14 years old. Oh, that was close. There we go. Scrambles left. Ooh, that was risky. Where was he throwing that? By the time he let go of this ball, I'm actually... I'm actually a little bit concerned with where he was throwing this. To be honest, I think he was trying to hit one of these guys and just sailed it. I don't know. Let's watch it from the backside. I think he... I think it just kind of sailed. I don't know. That's tough to say. The guy wasn't even breaking across the field by the time he threw it. All right, getting zero pressure again. What are you going to do? What's your answer? Fade away. And this isn't even on him, dude. His team doesn't have an answer. He's running... What? Deep out route? Switch release? Whatever. I hate watching film when guys don't have plays or answers within their scheme to beat zero blitz. Like, he's just dropping back there. I right, go play ball, dude. Like, that's an uncomfortable position to be at as a quarterback in the NFL. As a quarterback in college. All right, they're bringing it again. Zero again. Like, the defense coordinator knows. Look, they don't have answers. That was a good body catch. I like that he got rid of it. Stood in there, took a hit. Like, there we go. <laughs> Super slow five-step post, but I'll take it. Let's watch him here. One, two, three. Slides back. Protects himself. Good ball. That's great. That's a great rep. There we go. Three-man rush again. Drops back. Lots of time. Ball's out. <sighs> Come on, man. Come on. You got to hit those. This is why we see his completion percentage some games get 50s, 40s. Like, the easy one that they give you. They give you a gimme here. And, like, this has got to be 10 out of 10. And he just misses it too often and i'm sorry like that doesn't that doesn't just get cleaned up in the nfl the, the misses that should not happen don't just go away i mean that's tough oh i gotta catch that this was a this was a dime one two three held the safety rips it in you want him to put the ball here i'm not gonna i mean if you're just like, you want this ball to land right outside the hash. So I would say it was a seed, should be caught, should be a touchdown. A little low. I mean, it shouldn't have been that hard, but dude's got to make a play too. Receiver in the NFL probably catches that. Like, that, quote, missed accuracy should still be a touchdown. That's still got to be a touchdown. That's a tough catch. Really tough catch. He would have liked to not pull him as much in, but it's the way it goes. Here we go. Four-man rush. One, two, three. Get in the soft part of the pocket. There you go. Find your check down. Get across the middle of the field. Oh my God. He looked like he got knocked out. That was a good rep. I'm excited to see what his footwork looks like after training camp, after OTAs, after all that stuff, because it's going to look a lot different than it does now. I promise you that. Great job avoiding right here. We'll say that is the most dangerous type of throw of all time. You just throw that ball away. If you cannot put it on, because I promise that's going to be a dude in the league. 
you also have better offensive linemen, most likely. Can't even make that real comparison, but as far as getting to this point to make this decision to throw the ball right here, in the NFL, if you leave that ball short, it's probably picked, and most of the time it's going to be the house. I don't know, man. This is one of the sloppier games I think I've had to break down, and it's unfortunate because it's his last game that he played. Here we go. Play action. One, two, three. Slides left a little bit. Throws it. Good ball. Let's see where he's at in the pocket. Here we go. Play action. Please drop back straight. Oh. In my opinion, that's kind of slightly, slightly bad off to the side. I don't know. Right here, if I'm seeing color, my move isn't going to be this way. I don't know. Good throw, though. Good throw. I just think the, the common theme is footwork, where he's at in the pocket, like sketchy decision making. And he has some like wow throws every once in a while, but the wow doesn't outweigh like the bad stuff or the sketchy stuff. That's a great play. Let's watch him in the pocket again, though. So corner out, three step hitch, one, two, like. I just feel a little franticness in the pocket. And trust me, I get that. I've been there. I know I know what that feels like. But my biggest thing is I hope that he doesn't go somewhere where he has to play because I think that he can do it. It's just he's got he's got a lot. Like he needs a good quarterback coach that can get him up to speed. He's just super, super raw. Oh, come on, dude. All right, right here. And this is the other thing I'm seeing. Right as the snap happens, like this is the shit that I'm talking about. Right as the snap happens, what happens to the shell of the defense? Hands go down. You see this guy pulling out. That means he's most likely going to be a hook defender. If you see him go straight back, he's probably going to be covered too. That means he's got to be playing up. This guy's probably going to be either staying here or kicking over. They've been running some of this like deep, deep, deep. So let's see what happens. There we go. They end up getting to that pre-aligned cover two Tampa. Like this ends up being just a really deep Tampa player. You could call it three deep. Uh, you see it in Madden. It, these guys play very similar. These guys are playing the flats, like cover two underneath. Everything under here looks like re regular cover two. We just add an extra middle defender. Seeing that as the snap happens tells you the last thing that you have is the out route into a cover two corner. And that pump fake... He was throwing that. That was a reaction to not. Like, that's that wasn't a pump fake to try to get someone to bite. He was trying to let that ball go because he didn't see it. And then he reloads, recoils, and throws it out of bounds. And this was first and 10. And my thing is like, dude, you have a three-man rush. There's no reason to try to force one when you can just progress back across the board, then scramble. You have time. Sort of like get a dead play incompletion like those are the things that now you're in second and 10. That's tough. I don't think he has as good of defensive recognition as we would think. And again, this is his last game of his college career. So like you would think that all of those things of seeing film, seeing the defense would be at its peak at that point in time. And then a shovel taking the decisions out of his hands. And they're not out of this game in college. Like Being down 19 points in college in the third quarter is not the end of the world. And then look. This guy sees cover two. Look at how he runs his route. What is one, two? He's just dropping back to start running. He's three man rush. He's dropping back and then he's going to just try to start running. He doesn't want to read the field, which again, depending on how they're coaching this, I can't tell him whether or not he should take this in the NFL. They're going to say, take this inside shoulder. Like the last play, it was a straight up out route and he was going to throw that out of bounds, but he sees it. He doesn't. I don't know if he should because they don't know how he's being coached, but instead of checking it down to your running back, you're going to run. And yes, you make a play here, but this is kind of where he lives though, is like he's living in these got to go be a baller, make a play instead of like reading it out where in reality, if he had just progressed to his running back, his running back has more space than anybody. And again, I'm not going to fault him for a good play. I'm just trying to get to the reality of like, how often did those things happen? And what's the probability of your mindset and progression of not there, run, oh, scramble, he's open, working percentages wise versus not there, not there immediately, get to your running back, you got eight to 10 yards. Like over the course of time, if you run that same play 20 times, that outcome might happen like five, six seven maybe the other one will happen 90 percent of the time and i think that's why his completion percentage is so low is because he tries to live in that world where he has to make big plays one two three scrambles oh, tough his wind up got him here 
Great job to get out of the sack. I don't... Shuffled his feet to regather, to throw. Got hit as he's throwing. I don't know. If I, if I have somebody barreling down my neck, I'm never going to pull up to throw. Ever. I'm literally going to be running full speed as fast as I can and throwing on the run. The little pull up is what got him here. But I, I don't know. I feel like I've been watching so nitpicky this entire cut up. But shit, I guess if you're a top five pick projected, you're going to you're gonna be nitpicked. Here we go. Great patience. Great eyes. This is what I like, bro. I like this a lot. He looks left, so no pluggers get involved over there. Really patient feet. Look at his feet on this play compared to the others that we've seen. Left, right, back, resets. Comfortable in a good part of the pocket. Delivers a strike in stride. Like, he needs to find a way to live in that world as often as possible. Because when his feet are haywire, honestly, it comes down to him not... It doesn't seem like he has a plan when his feet are haywire. Like, drop back and, all right, let me go be a baller. One, two, three... Climbs the pocket. That was a dime. Let's go, man. Way to stand in there. Get to the soft part of the pocket. Like, he climbed. Bought enough time. Knew what he was doing. Knew where he was going with the ball. Threw with conviction. And delivers a strike across the middle of the field. Like, that's a big time play. Like, that is such a big time play. Here we go. Knows he's got the pressure. Sees it. One, two. Throws. Like, he's got the ability, bro. He's literally... Like, he has the ability to do that. Let's just, like... Make the routine stuff happen more consistently. Oh, man. The old school pump fake. Oh, come on. Stop being lazy with your feet, big dog. Stop being lazy. Where are you pump faking, though? My thing right here is he's like trying to hit a home run. Throw the ball. Throw the ball. He's wide open. Throw the ball. 20 out of 20 times, throw the ball. And then if he's not, don't pump fake to try to get people to bite to throw over the top. Go to your running back. This is the stuff that just drives me insane watching this film is like, you just get your eight yards, go down. If you don't like him, you know they're in this drop three, basically preset Tampa two, go to your running back. Your running back is telling you to go to your running back. Look, he's like, give me the ball. I am wide open, give me the ball. And this is like the hero ball stuff that like, if he goes to a bad team and he has to be their savior, it's going to get really ugly fast. Again, what is this? First and 10 again, like another wasted first and 10 opportunity where even here, don't be lazy with your feet, bro. Don't be lazy with your feet and just try to flick it and think you can get it there because you missed the throw. All of that could have been avoided though. If you just take your three-step drop, jam it on him, reset to your back. He catches it, splits two, probably gets the first down. And instead, like, you're just like, I don't know. I don't like that. I don't like that type of ball. It's just like too nonchalant, too cool. And he misses the throw. I don't like it. Good feet, patient. Now you find your running back a little too late, but you find him. I'm going to take that. I'm glad you found your running back. Do it on first down. That's okay. That's a win. Now what are they going to do? Now they're going to like the cloud cover six. All right, now we got QB draw. This is a good play call. Oh, come on, big dog. Here we go. I like that. Defensive recognition. Knows somebody's uncovered. Just go take advantage. Nice. Good ball location. Like, it can be that simple. It can be that simple. Let's go, man. Now get it rolling. I know you're down in this game. Look, the preset. You see it. They're going to it. They're showing you what they're going to do. They're going to rush through. You're going to have time. Who's your outlet right here? You're running back. Can you let's see? He's got to catch that. These are these are two things. This receiver's got to catch this. In my humblest of opinions, humblest of opinions, he's got to catch that. I also think if you know the DB is jumping it and you know your running backs out to the flat, replace the guy that's leaving the flat with your running back. Like, oh, he's getting jumped. If I'm not gonna put this on my on his outside shoulder, get out there. Running back gets you probably six seven. It's the interception. It's unfortunate. He also just kind of like blindly throws it. Let's see when he's starting his throwing motion. My old quarterback coach used to tell me this. If I ever see you start your throwing motion without your eyes on the receiver, I know you're throwing blind. That's about as close as it gets. Like, that's unfortunate. All right, they got the ball back. Drops back. 
Let me get some pressure, get sacked. I'm just getting to this. This is just a bad game at this point. I didn't think it was going to be that bad of a game. I think he's having a really bad game. Again, there's outlets everywhere. I know, I know you're getting pressured, but I, again, I think you can throw it away. I think you can get a completion. I want to see the baller flip on a little bit. This film, if anything, tells me that if he goes to a team where he's not being coached well, and he goes to a team that's just simply not good, it's going to be a disaster. All right. And they benched him. Long story short, man, this is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing a raw quarterback. He's capable. Like he has some flashes, but like he's not nearly as close to being a top five guy based on what I'm seeing on film as anybody that I've seen in the media say. And my path for him to be successful in my opinion, Opinion, is one he has to sit two he's got to be behind a quarterback that's actually willing to teach him and a quarterback coach in a west coast type scheme that can get him to play consistently like first down second down within the confines of the offense play on schedule because he's not a freak athlete and doesn't have like a freakish arm to be able to live in the off schedule world not from what i've seen he's not a josh allen type of freak he's not somebody that's just gonna run people over he's not gonna break out an 80 yard run like he's just kind of like an above average quarterback in my opinion he's big he can make the throws he can stand there and deliver but he is really raw and we're gonna see it at the combine i want to see what does his like footwork look like at the combine after the last two months of prepping with a quarterback coach is it cleaned up what's his delivery look like there's some things that i want to see like anticipation and timing when he's throwing these out routes and these corner routes and it's hard to throw to receivers at the combine that you've never thrown to but from what i'm seeing in his final game of his college career he looked like a sophomore quarterback he did not look like a top five draft pick he looked like a guy that in my opinion should have either played another year but probably not in that system because that system was abysmal like i would have loved to see him play in a michigan type of offense to know what can he do in a pro style system what can he do on the west coast because his footwork was atrocious his arm talent was above average he's willing to stand there and take hits and deliver but i think if someone's going to take him with the top 10 pick they're going to be giving up a lot in opportunity cost of whoever else they could have grabbed in that same slot and i think a guy like him is probably like a second or third round guy but we'll see how it all plays out that's just my honest breakdown and i do wish him well though because i know what it feels like to be in a situation where it doesn't look like he's being catered to it doesn't look like he's being like prepared and you can kind of tell by his footwork the plays that he looks like he's confident in he's pretty sharp with his footwork when he's not it's like all right let's go play backyard football so hopefully he can clean it up and have a good career